world. Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle, and I am committed to helping you, yes, you, live your fully funded life, whatever that looks like. You know, we define a fully funded life as being able to do exactly what you've been put on earth to do, regardless of its cost or its income potential. And so today we're on episode number 221. Episode number 221. That is the voice of Whitney Purcell. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see her. Where are you joining from today? I am joining from the Kansas City Metro on the Kansas side. That's awesome. Okay, so you're in the great Jayhawk Nation. Are you a Jayhawk fan? Yes, I am. I'm a Jayhawk fanatic, I would say. Uh, Joe was laughing earlier this year when the Jayhawks won the national championship, and I got on the next day, and I had a national shirt on, and he's like, how did you get that already? And I was like, this is the retro from the last time they won. <laughs> so I was like, it got brought out immediately. So, Go yeah. Jayhawks, I guess. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, Today is the last Monday of September. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. Uh, but October, I love October. Uh, we're entering, like we talked about last week, fall months. I'm I'm ready to say goodbye to hot weather and to bring on jackets and sweaters and all the fun fall things that really kick into full gear in October. So, well, I'm excited for this episode. Tell everybody what we're going to talk about. Yes, we're continuing on with our You Asked For It series, and today we're going to answer the question, how can I budget or save when I can't pay my bills? So really, this is sparked out of like during the um, financial learning experiences that you go and teach at different churches, you use this app called Slido, and we've talked about this earlier on in this series, where people go on and they can submit their questions and you'll answer them during the events. Um, but this is something we compiled all these lists of questions. And so we've been trying to answer it during this series. And this is something that people, when they're struggling to make ends meet, they really feel this pressure of like, how do I actually budget or save if I can't even pay what I have now? And it is a question we get all the time. Obviously, if you're showing up in an area and you're teaching a finance class, and it's birthed out of my book called I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, you're always going to attract a certain quantity of people who are struggling greatly. And they're, they're, lo they're, they're looking for financial help, but more than that, they're looking for hope. And so today, we're wanting to offer hope. So if you're struggling to pay your bills, or if you know someone who is, this is for that person. If you're somebody who likes to mentor others, uh, this is a good episode to listen to so that you can kind of bookmark it and share it with people as you encounter people really facing these great challenges with their finances. But before we dive into that content today, we're going to have my favorite moment, which is, you know what time it is. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. All right, today for today's current money event section, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address an issue. I'm going to rant. I'm going to rant. Can I rant, Whitney? Yes, go right ahead. I'm going to rant. <laughs> I get this question all the time. It says, Joe, should I get a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, H-E-L-O-C, home equity line of credit? Should I get a HELOC to pay off my credit card debt? It's less interest. Um, and, and, and they... They, I have met so many people who have done that. 
They went and got a home equity line of credit. Their house has grown in value, so they have equity. They've paid down some of the debt, so they have more equity. And so they use this home equity line of credit to pay off their credit card debt. And they, they get all fired up about it in that moment because they're like, it's less interest. And now I've got this set payment. And I would just say this, my rant is this, do not get a home equity line of credit to pay off your credit card debt unless, this is the big unless, unless you have proven to yourself, not to me, not to anybody else, but proven to yourself that you can live and operate on a budget without incurring any new debt for at least six months. Here's why. What happens to almost every person who gets a home equity line of credit to consolidate credit card debts who has not proven to themselves for at least six months that they can prepare a budget every month and live without any incurring any new credit card debt. Here's what happens. They get this home equity line of credit. Now they have no credit card debt. And they're like, this is awesome. I have no credit card debt. But they have missed one major moment. And that is they have not changed the behavior that led to the credit card debt in the first place. And because they haven't went through the rigorous process of changing their behavior, which is very difficult to do, and proving to themselves that they can live differently financially, guess what happens? The credit card debt starts to grow back. Yeah. It's like those weeds out in the yard where you took off the top, but you didn't take it out by the root. And the next thing you know, there's new growth showing up. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're six months in, a year in, two years in. And now not only do you have your home equity line of credit, but guess what's grown all the way back? The credit card debt. And now you have the home equity line of credit bill and the new credit card bill. I see it happen over and over and over again. And people are using their, their equity in their house to fund financial misbehavior. Don't be this person. This is why we see people all the time in their 60s who still owe a huge amount of money on their house. And when you ask them, when did you first buy a house? Maybe not this house, but first bought a house. Well, we bought it in our mid-20s, our late 20s. And in your, you're in your 60s now. You've been paying on a house payment for 35 years, for 40 years, and you still owe a tremendous amount of money. Why? Because they couldn't change their financial behavior. And they kept pulling the equity out, whether it's through a refinance or a line of credit. And as a result, they're still paying a huge payment when they should be debt-free on everything, including their house. Yeah. So that's my rant. Do not get a home equity line of credit unless you've proven to yourself for six months that you can live by a budget and incur no new debt, that you've proven to yourself that you have truly changed your financial behavior. Then it can be an excellent financial decision. And so I encourage you, think about it that's what we're here to help with. And that's it for today's current money events section rant edition. Get fired up. I love it. That's so good. I think too, Joe, we've heard so many stories where people, when they have that credit card debt, they're hungry to get rid of it. And as you were talking, I'm thinking, you know, do people, when they transferred over and there's a little less pressure off, mm -hmm are they as hungry to get rid of it? Or does it kind of take some of that need to get to break up with that debt away? So man, such a good point. I'm so glad you brought that up this week. So we're gonna jump right into our success stories. And we say over and over again, each week, this is what we're powered by. We want to hear your successes. This is why we do what we do. This is why we have this podcast because we want to hear you guys winning with your money. We want to hear you accomplishing your goals and moving forward to financial freedom so that you can do exactly what you were put on this earth to do. So today's success story is from Kathy, who is motivated to pay off debt faster than planned. Kathy says, this is the first time that we've actually stayed with a budget. We're looking at being debt free in 20 months, but are really trying to cut it down to about 12 months with the Lord's help. God is good. So wow. 
Kathy's just at the beginning of her journey, but you can hear that there is a commitment to it and that it seems like what she's saying is they felt like it was impossible and now they feel like it's possible and not just that, but hey, here's what it says we can do, but we want to do it even faster. Absolutely. And you know what stands out to me is she's saying this is the first time we've stayed with a budget. Yeah. And that's such a huge statement. Like it, uh, it can't be stated in a profound enough, deep, you know, serious, but she stayed with the budget. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Because you think about this, what she's saying is, I've tried a budget before. We didn't stay with it. We've tried a budget to, to get, it didn't work, but this is the first time we've stayed with it. Mm -hmm. And what she's really saying is, this is the first time we put together a budget that's realistic. It's a budget that we understand, a budget that works for us, and we can see progress happening. And so she's become a buyer of the process. And that's our passion with Fully Funded Life, and I encourage everybody to check it out at fullyfunded.life and consider becoming a member because our goal is to help you learn financial tools and knowledge in such a way that you comprehend it because if you can't comprehend it, you can't apply it. And once you comprehend it, give you the resources, the hope, the encouragement, the nudge to be diligent with it. And that's what's happening for Kathy. And now she sees 20 months and she's wanting to cut off eight months of that. Yeah. That fire you up? That is so exciting. I feel like that's why we do what we do as well. When you're talking about fully funded life, we want you to have that community that's encouraging you and saying like, yes, it's possible. Because we've heard stories even just last week where they got they got intense about it and they were like, hey, it said 33 months and mm -hmm. we made huge changes and we cut it down to a third of that. So Kathy, awesome, stick with it. Um, listen to our weird ways to make money and think about <laughs> ways to help make money to pay that off quicker, but we know you can do it. And we're excited to hear that you're fired up and ready to go. That's awesome. Fired up about, I, you coined a new term there. Maybe we need to noodle on this, Whitney. What is that? <laughs> Financial <laughs> intensity. Ooh, I like you yeah, said the word intensity and that's exactly what's happening. I, I remember our last success story. I remember the success story. The financial intensity has gotten wound up. It's gotten mm -hmm. heated up. And when people get financial intensity, man, things start to happen. That now, we say this podcast is powered by our listener success. And so we are fully powered up. The thing is that max, me, the <laughs> battery is full. We're charged up. Let's go. Let's start teaching. Remind everybody what we're talking about today. So today's topic is do you ask for it? How can I budget and save when I can't pay my bills? And I feel like there's, you, we talked about this last week. There is desperation in that. So this is, you got to say it with that desperation where it's like, how do I do this? How do I save or budget when I can't even pay my bills? They're at their end of the rope. That's right. I mean, that's so huge. And we're going to talk about that today. It's, it's such an important thing to really help people with because we, we know for a fact that so many people get into this type of mess and yeah. the it's not asked for. They they didn't invite it. They certainly don't want it to mm -hmm. be in a position where they literally cannot pay all their bills. Yeah. And the fact is some people believe they don't have enough, mm -hmm. but it's a lie. They're buying a money lie. But yeah. if they put together a budget, they actually do have enough. Yeah. What they're really saying is I don't have what I want. So therefore I'm not going to budget. And then there's the other group of people where it is reality that yeah. there's no point in doing a budget because I know there's not enough. And that's usually from somebody who's had a massive shift in their financial picture, yeah. whether it is they've become ill and they've lost their primary income. Uh, maybe they've gotten laid off unexpectedly. Uh, maybe they've went through divorce and the household income is gone and they got the house in the deal, but it's 70% of their total income now. And it's just, there's a massive shift. And so today we're really going to work through that of helping people. And this is our passion. Then we'll have a giveaway for everybody um, that 
people will be able to just download. And when we're talking about help, I, I can't pay my bills. That's really what we're talking about. Yeah. We're, if this is really a cry from the deep heart that says, help, I can't do this. So yeah. I would say do a budget first. The first thing you need to do is prepare a budget because we need to determine, is this reality? Is the, the statement you're saying, you know, I can't pay my bills. How can I budget or save when I can't pay my bills? We need to know if that's real or if that's a perceived thing, but it's actually a lie. So yeah. do a budget. And that's getting all of your income out there for the next month, getting all of your expenses. Listen to our budgeting episodes. Uh, join Fully Funded Life and watch the, the budgeting lessons there that can step-by-step step help you prepare a budget. But let's say, Whitney, for the sake of this podcast, it is reality. They don't have enough. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to answer the question, how can they budget or save when they truly cannot pay their bills? There's not enough. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing they should do is what? Set priorities. That's so, right. Yeah. Joe, you want to jump in and kind of talk about that? What, yeah. what does that look so, like? So you got to set priorities and uh, I'm going to show this ebook, uh, help. I can't pay my bills. And I just kind of want to share this with everybody. You know, these are good looking eBooks. They can help people. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. And you can see us going through the steps here. And the first step that I would say is write it down. Yeah. You need to write down the budget. And as I say, you know, it's hard to slay a dragon if you don't know how many heads it has. Mm -hmm. And so the spending plan helps ensure you know the actual situation instead of the imagined or perceived situation. So you need to prepare this plan, even if you know it's going to be awful, yeah. even if you know there's not enough, even if it frustrates you, causes your upper lip to start sweating, makes you flush red and makes you experience those really negative human emotions of anger and sadness and humiliation and shame, because you've got to bring those out into the light. I find that these devils that we're facing when we're broke, broke, it, they, they start to burn up or shrink when they're brought into the light. We got to drag it all out of the closet, get all this mess documented. We've got to write it down because only after you write it down, can you set priorities? That's the only way you can set priorities. Yeah. And, and if you think about setting priorities, you know, when we think about this budget, you know, how do you set priorities? Well, the first thing you have to do is say, what is it that gets paid first? What are the priorities? And in this ebook that we're going to give away called Help, I Can't Pay My Bills, we have a whole document that lists the priorities. So when you don't have enough money, it starts with what? Maybe you could read these off, uh, Whitney, and then I can do the kind of the play-by-play. -play. Yes. So the first one is housing. So yeah. Yeah, we're going through, and in this list, it's such a helpful tool. I love this because it takes some of the pressure off of people as they're looking at like the this or that. They're kind of trying to figure out and do this where it's like, okay, first step, pay your housing. Yeah, yep. and you got to take care of your house. Whether that's a mortgage because you're paying down a house or it's your rent and your utilities, you've got to take care of housing. Mm -hmm. This stuff does not work very good when you lose control of your housing situation. It's hard to maintain income. It's hard to maintain any of that when you lose your housing. Now, if you have a giant mortgage and you, you may need to sell the house because if you don't sell it right away and your mortgage is 60, 70% of your take-home pay, you're going to lose the house through foreclosure quite rapidly. So you got to change it maybe. But in the meantime, keep it current so that you can actually get the equity out of it. Yeah, that's such a good point, Joe, especially like we looked at like back in 2008, 2009, when we saw a recession and people held on. And at that time, you know, people were in houses where they really shouldn't have been. They, it was more than they could afford. Right. Um, I know things have changed in terms of lending qualifications, but maybe your financial situation has changed where you would have qualified for the house when you purchased it. 
but now you look at with inflation or maybe you know you lost your job and had to scale back to something that doesn't pay as much so even though you originally qualified for this home maybe your 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 situation has changed to where really your house is more than you can afford so instead of just burying your head down and be like well this is what i have to do maybe it's time to make some of those tough decisions and say i need to move to something different um we know right now it's kind of a difficult time to move you need to analyze that because before you just say okay i'm going to sell look at the interest rates and figure yep. out what would i pay for something different um so sometimes this requires moving away yeah. to a different area and it's very tough it's challenging and you can say that's not right, that's not fair, but that's a systems issue. You know, the so-called gentrification, all these different things that happen when rents go out of control. Mm -hmm. That stuff is systems issue. And we can talk about that on another day. Yes, but yes. your personal budget, you can rail all you want against the issue, but the reality is still facing you every month. So yeah. the first thing you prioritize is housing. And we have a number two next to this one here, but it really is tied for number one. That yeah. is food, food and prescription medication, mm -hmm. right? Think about that. Yes. So this one's so good too, because I think I like that you put them together because these are basically our essential needs. What we're trying to do is boil down and talk about pay your needs first. Um, so when we're talking about prescription medication, you clearly need to have that there um, for whatever purpose. And then um, food. When we're hitting on this though, let's be realistic about what is a food need versus a food want. So right. when we're talking about food here, this is your grocery stuff. This doesn't include restaurants. This is it doesn't not include food. Olive Garden. No, Texas no. Roadhouse, Longhorn. Yeah, exactly. Ruth's Chris, Outback. Right. I know. We're and even McDonald's. Let's just be real. Yeah, even fast food can start to add up when you have like you know Absolutely. you can go and drop like twenty five bucks at that Wendy's like it's no big deal and it's like it wasn't a good meal but it, it was a quick meal so this is saying prioritize food grocery store pickup you right. know or picking up groceries that kind of thing so um in this stage if you're struggling to pay your bills look for the place like an Aldi where you can go and get your groceries for cheap and do that. So, but prioritize food and prescription medication second. And what we're really doing here is helping you prioritize in a way that helps you as a human first and financial stuff second and gives you the okay to say to certain people you owe or certain bills, I can't pay you right now. Not that I'm never going to pay, but if there's not enough, somebody's not going to get a pay, get paid you might as well be intentional about which ones get paid and which ones do not. Because the truth be told, we have not mentioned credit cards yet, but no. credit cards will start screaming earlier because they're unsecured. And so we'll rattle off the others, transportation, then back taxes, then secured debts, like your car, then family and friends debts. And the very last one is your credit card debts. And you can find this in this free ebook, but really what we're saying here is we're setting priorities. You can't set priorities if you don't have a budget and you're looking at how much you have. But when you're going through this list of priorities and you're done with money and it's now you're overspent, you have to stop. And if you stopped and you haven't been able to pay family and friends debts, you need to call them and have a conversation. Yeah. So you got to set priorities. But let's go through the next thing that I really want to make sure that you go through is, and this is all spelled out for you in this ebook. I really love this because it's kind of a worksheet and it's the next thing. And what should, what's the next thing they should do? The next thing is ask questions. Yeah. So, yep. This is kind of, we're trying to get you to understand what is at the root cause of your situation. So you're trying to figure out and basically do like your own little internal S, um, investigation of what got me into this place. Was it something out of my control or was it that my expenses and, or my spending was out of control? So, you know, really kind of doing that honest reflection there to try to figure out one, how do I stop the bleeding? And two, how do I prevent it from happening in the future? Right. You know, we say this, you know, in this, in this step of asking questions, uh, you got to ask good questions mm -hmm. and we guide you in these decisions, but it really allows you to understand the root cause of your current financial situation. 
so that you can prevent in the future, but it also allows you to reduce your gap so you can minimize any hole that you're digging. Because sometimes you're digging by not being able to pay, you're digging. And yeah. so these series of questions really help you. And we'll ask a few of these. Um, we have a quote here that says, the budget is an ultimate truth teller. So it doesn't say how you feel about your money. It tells you where you are with your money. And so let's, let's share some of the questions, Whitney. Share some of the questions they yeah. should ask. So the first question was, what was the cause of this situation? And then question two is, is this an income or an issue or both? Ooh. Right. That's a yeah. great question. Yeah, that hits the nail on the head. That like gets to your gut a little bit. <laughs> what are the required debt payments? So yeah, like what do you have to pay? Yes, this is so good because then like you were saying, you can't slay the dragon without knowing what the dragon is. And sometimes we feel like the giant is way bigger than it is. And we're just afraid to look at it in the eye. So this is the really like looking at it, owning up to what it is. Uh, the fourth question is, is there something that can be sold? So, right, and I just want to stop there and say, you know, what do you have in your garage? What do you have that you are not using? And, and I want to just step in and say, you know, nothing can be regarded as sacred or holy here. Mm -hmm. When you're in a financial disaster, sometimes we have to break up with things that are actually part of our hobby or habit, like those beautiful golf clubs, that motorcycle, uh, that lawnmower that you haven't used in a while. Uh, it, it could be that RC airplane. I, I don't know what it is. It might be that crafty item. But mm -hmm. here's what I'm saying. If, you, if it has value and you can sell it and get money, that helps you solve your right now issue. And it doesn't mean you can't go get that item again later. It's just saying for now, is there something that we can sold because it allows you to generate income, right now income, prevents mm -hmm. the, the hole from being dug as deep, more deeply, helps you retain possessions you do have like your house longer, which gives you more decisions and more opportunity maybe to fix your income side. Yeah. There's another question, a fifth question that they can ask. Yeah. What's that? What expenses can be stopped? So this is looking at those extras, the extra outgoes, the non, non essentials. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the cable. It, listen, if you don't have enough, let's turn off cable. Yeah. Uh, let's turn off the streaming services. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's stop the subscriptions. Hey, is Amazon destroying your budget? Maybe you need to turn that off for a while. Yeah. I know that's sacrilege, but. You can, and then you go to this ultimate question, which is where most people try to run to, which is what? How can income be increased? Right. So yeah. when you think about how can income be increased, most people, let's just be honest here, Whitney. Most people, they run to that. Yeah. They run to, I need to produce more income. Yeah. But the fact is, you know, Income should be the last thing. I mean, it's really good. It's really important. Got to think about it. But a lot of times the income stuff, it, it, it has a startup phase. Yeah. The outgo side, you can turn things off. It's, it's a faucet yeah. you can turn off or certainly constrict greatly. Yes. Well, and let's just be honest too. A lot of times, if you don't look at the outgo side first, you're going to carry those bad habits into the additional income. So the additional income, if you focus right on that, it may help you for a little bit, but then what's going to happen is you may make some headway and you've carried on all those bad habits um, where it's like, then your continues to grow exponentially like your income grows. And there's this myth that like, if I just make more, then everything's going to be okay. And we've seen this over and over again. I mean, we've had stories on here where it's talking about like, um, isn't it Gary who was on with his wife and he was like, I made great money, but my, in, or my expenses were out of control and it's not an outgo problem or it's not an income problem all the time. It's oh. an outgo problem. So that's why we really ask you to take these steps in this order. And it may be something where you need to search down and you know, it's time that you negotiate a pay raise because it's um, warranted. But you've got to remember, like, they're not just going to give you a pay raise because you're spending too much. <laughs> so That's right. And what I love about this resource that we're giving away, uh, we'll have a link, a download link in here. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it's down in the show notes. Otherwise, it's in the regular show notes. But 
here's here's what I would like to say. Uh, it's a workbook, really. It allows you to ask yourself the question, but be honest with yourself. Don't don't lie to yourself. And what I'm really saying is, don't allow yourself to play the role of victim. Mm. You know, it's really easy when you're in a place where you can't pay all your bills to start pointing at all the reasons people as a reason or circumstances as the reason and then give up. And what that means is you become the victim. Well, I've given you the reason why I'm broke that this person was wrong and fired me and they fired me for no cause or what, whatever it is. And a lot of people, when they play the role of victim, Whitney, they, they are satisfying themselves when they state the reason for, for being a victim. And, and what I find is it changes their approach to the problem as is, as in, well, I don't have to deal with this because I, this is somebody else's fault. This is some other thing that I couldn't control's fault. And so they're like, so it just is what it is. But I would say, if you truly want to prosper, you've got to stop playing the role of victim. Whitney, you could right now name five reasons why you shouldn't win with money. Yeah. Easy. I could right now share five reasons why I should be broke. I, I mean, I could list them all. You yeah. know, I went to college and had no money. My mommy and daddy didn't pay for my college. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about credit cards and they took advantage of me. You know, uh, I could say you know, that I went through these jobs and, you know, it. I never got fired from jobs. Hallelujah. Uh but I went through challenges of having to move. And I, if I didn't move, I probably would have been out of the job because they were closing lines at our factory. I yeah. could list all these things. Yes. I could say that I bought a house right at the start of 2007 and then the market collapsed and it cost me $60,000 to fix stuff that really added no value in, over the course of seven years that I spent 60 K on garbage stuff, like new drywall. Cause it was destroyed rotten floors and a new AC unit and a new roof. And I, I sold it for 25,000 less than I bought it. And I could point at that and say, I'm a victim of buying the house at the wrong time. Yeah. But instead I chose to say, I'm not going to play that role. The devil is a lie. I'm not going to do that. And you've done the same thing in your life. Yeah, it's one of those things that I think you can either be paralyzed by the situation that you're in and allow those um, setbacks or those trials to keep you just stunted or um, keep you in this state of fear or even anger sometimes. I think there's sometimes people that get into that role and it's like, it may be that stuff has spun out of control and it, it is not your doing. It is something that has happened to you. However, you can either choose to be a survivor and a fighter and say like, hey, I triumph in spite of these things mm. because I use this to fuel my need to get forward and do that. And That's so I'm good. You're talking about You're preaching like, now. Yeah, I am. I'm getting <laughs> in the a yeah, little I, bit. I think I it's do. important as you say that you're saying these powerful emotions, you're saying anger. Yeah. You think about these powerful human emotions, anger, shame, humiliation. Mm-hmm. Those are so powerful and they are paralyzers if you don't, if you don't watch out. And what I have found for me is when I start reciting all the way things are wrong and how people have done me wrong, the more I state it, the more I start buying into it and it paralyzes me more. Yes. When I stop repeating it, and looking for affirmation from people on, oh yeah, you know what? That person was mean to you and that was really bad. And wow, geez, that was terrible. I don't make any progress. All I do is soothe myself by say, and feed my anger or shame or humiliation. But instead, mm-hmm. when you just say, that was bad, whoo, it's Monday. I feel like I live 71 Mondays in a row. <laughs> I'm listening to this podcast and Joe Whitney are firing me up and saying, I can do this. And despite all these terrible things that are happening, I can prosper. And I'm going to, I'm going to knuckle down. I'm going to listen to some episodes called weird ways to make money. 
<laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to start making money weird ways. And I'm going to start working on making every dollar screen because that was weird. That was bad, but that's in my past. I'm going to live in the vision of the future. And there's going to be a day where it's not going to be help. I can't pay my bills. It's going to be, Hey, I'm going to have surplus and yeah. I'm going to be able to prosper and move towards my plans, hopes, and dreams. This is a bad moment, but I'm going to choose to learn the lessons in it. I'm going to get the bad feelings all over me. And then I'm going to get washed clean of it because I'm taking practical, real actions. Yep. And I encourage you to take that practical, real action by downloading the ebook. And I think we should, maybe we could call the name right now. If it's different, look on the screen or look in the notes. But I think we should link it at uh, fullyfunded.life slash help. Fullyfunded.life slash help, where you can just download the ebook and get started on fixing your help I can't pay my bills moment and you'll start prospering. Any last words? Um, I just wanna encourage you if you're in that state where you feel overwhelmed to have a perspective change and shift apart. And um, you know maybe it's time to pray about that and just say like, Lord, help me to shift my perspective. And from this is overwhelming and I can't do this to how can I start making steps forward? And we're not saying that it's going to be easy, but we want you to experience that shift of perspective and know that you are able to overcome this and move forward. So we just encourage you in this season, download that book, start making headway. Don't run away, face it head on. That's awesome. You know, the quote for the day is from Henry Ford that says, whether you think you can or think you can't you are right. And so we know you can. That's why we're here to help you. And we're fired up to be able to give you that free resource. Hey, feel free to download it. Send it to a friend that's struggling. Uh, we want to be able to help them however we can. Honored to be able to provide that. Tell everybody what we're going to bring the next episode. I'm really excited about it. Next week, we're going to have a special guest, Brad Rhodes of Grace Marriage. And you guys are going to be talking about investing in your marriage. Oh, it's going to be so good. Listen, this is a new friend I've made, uh, and he was really passionate about the marriage relationship and helping people really navigate all aspects of marriage. But mm -hmm. I've asked him to speak specifically to people facing financial challenges uh, yeah. that can't, can't get on the same page financially. And so he's agreed to do that. So excited for that, to bring that to you. I think everybody's going to love that. Hey, if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who could benefit. You can do it by rating the podcast, leaving a quick review. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. Click the thumbs up sign. That helps YouTube send it to other people so they could discover it. If you really like the Monday Money Tip podcast, click that subscribe button. Click that little bell and notify you every single Monday that some new help is right there in your inbox ready to help you. We're so excited for that. Hey, as we wrap this up, we want to say it's Monday. It's the last Monday of September. We're roaring to October. We're falling into great seasons of the year. Uh, I want to make sure you take your next step. Hey, who is the one person that this ebook would benefit? Go to fullyfunded.life slash help and send it to them. We'd be honored if you would do that. Thanks so much. Have a great week. We'll see you right back here next Monday. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.